uh, this morning's one. It'll be part one, and it's called The Holy Spirit and Your Success. The Holy Spirit and Your Success. I am very success-orientated because we serve a God who knows nothing else but success. He knows no defeat. He never was defeated. He only knows success. And when you're born again from the Spirit of God, that success will be on the inside of you. Now, if you're surrounded by doom and gloomers, then you're going to have to learn how to retrain your thinking and close your ears to a bunch of stuff. So I want to help you this morning, the Holy Spirit uh, and your success. Now, the greatest success, let's lay this down to start off with, the greatest success in your life right now, if you're born again, is that you're not going to hell, but you're going to heaven. That's the greatest success. The greatest success is that the devil, the, the God of this world, no longer has a hold of your life. The God of, of heaven, the creator of the ends of the earth, he has a hold of your life. The day you got born again, he ripped you out of the kingdom of darkness. He took you right out of the chains and out of the bonds and out of the addiction. He took you right out of that and put you right up into the kingdom of his dear son. So the greatest success, the greatest success story is that you're not bound to hell anymore. We're heading to heaven. That's the greatest success. Now on the way from now until you get there, there's a thing called life. And you and I have got to learn how to live this the best possible way. We got to live it for Jesus. We got to live it and do the best. And so this is why I'm consumed with this, that the Holy Spirit wants to teach us how to make our days count, how to make our, 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 the, the times that we have to us, make it every day count so that we can be the best there possibly is representatives of the kingdom of God. Many years ago, uh, just actually when we came into this building, I had a, a vision concerning that uh, uh, the, the building wasn't as you see it right now, but I remember in the vision walking up to it, going through the doors. In fact, those doors weren't even there. The doors were actually here, but that's besides the point. I was walking up to the doors, and as I was walking to the door, I saw a huge sign, and there was, there was words on the sign, and as I walked up to it in the vision, I could read the words, and I wrote them down when the vision was over, but it said, through these doors walk ordinary people on their way to doing extraordinary things. I need, to, I need to tell you that again. I saw it. I saw it on the door, for, on, the, on the door, Holy Ghost writing on the door of that church that said, through those doors will walk ordinary people. Look at somebody say, that's me, that's me, that's me. Through those doors will walk ordinary people on their way to doing extraordinary things. So I don't think you're ordinary. Look at somebody say, you're rare. I don't think you're ordinary. I really believe you're extraordinary because God himself has a hold of you. In other words, nobody, nobody, nobody has to remain where they are. I don't care what level you're at, how far up the mountain or how far up the ladder you're at, you do not have to remain there. There's more. Look at me say, there's more, there's more. There is more. You'll never get to the end of it. God has always got something greater and something more fantastic. Our problem in this life is we don't know how to get there. We don't know how to take the next step. It's like somebody bringing you a brand new car and you haven't even got a driving license. It's like somebody bringing you a brand new one in with all the gadgets and all the couturements. Look at somebody say, I can't believe what he just said. <laughs> Katutrements. Oh, the, the brand new car coming in with all the latest gadgets and the katutrements, and then they hand you the keys and they're gone. They don't even know no instruction book, no manual. And you get in and say, this is fantastic. It's the best there is. I know, but you don't even know where to put the keys in. You don't know how to make that rascal move. You don't know how to make the engine sing. You know nothing about it. You're sitting in the greatest machine, but you don't know how to work it. Let me tell you, for most people, born-again believers, are sitting in the greatest event of history. They're sitting with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The Holy Ghost has taken residence on the inside of them, and they don't know how to move forward. If the creator of the ends of the earth is in the inside of you, why should we be stuck? Why should we be, uh, we should be unlimited? Because he has the thoughts that created it all. The one who thought them is on the inside of us. It's a matter of having conversations with him and learning how to interpret what he says and learning how to walk with him and turn our hearts to him. So we're going to start this morning and we're going to bring some things to your, uh, 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 to your teaching so that you'll understand how to get going. Jesus told his disciples one time, he said, I've got to go. 
It's absolutely necessary. It's imperative that I go. For if I don't go, then the next event will not happen. But the minute I go and go back to my Father, I'm going to immediately, we're going to dispatch the Holy Spirit to you. And He is going to come amongst you. He's going to teach you all things. And so the disciples went, and we're going to pick up in Acts chapter 2 and verse 14 what actually happened. You know it, which we know it now as the day of Pentecost. They were all sitting in the upper room, and the Holy Spirit came. There was wind blew through the place. The place was on fire. There was a roar of uh, 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 just a mighty move of God took in place. It, it so affected the people. The people in that place were, Bible says, filled with the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues. Uh, they were so full of joy that they broke out of that building and they came down the steps out into the main square where people, could, people were gathering. Now, the Bible said that they were so amazed about this bunch, the disciples coming out filled with the Holy Ghost, they, they just stood in their amazement watched what was going on. The Bible doesn't, even, doesn't really explain what they were doing. Uh, but uh, Peter st felt it necessary to get up and make a detailed instruction. And here's what he said at Acts chapter 2, verse 14. He says, But Peter, standing up with a laugh, and lifted up his voice and said to them, You men of Judea and all that dwell in Jerusalem, be it known unto you this day, hearken to my words, for these are not drunken as you suppose, saying it is but the third hour. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall, then he, Joel said this, It will come to pass in the last days, saith God, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. And on your servants and on their handmaids, he says, I will pour out, uh, I will pour out in those days of my Spirit, and they shall prophesy. He said, What you're seeing right now, has been foretold or been told before by Joel the prophet. He said that this historic event would take place. When this historic event would take place, everything would change from that moment forward. There would be a spiritual, a lot of spiritual activity. It will be a different dimension of spiritual activity taking place at that, at that time. In other words, he says, at that moment of time, from the day of Pentecost, he says, we'll usher in a new era. There'll be a new season, a new time with different rules will begin to be will begin to come come upon all people, all those that will receive Jesus and receive the Holy Spirit. Up until this time, the Old Testament, nobody could receive the Holy Spirit except the kings, the priests, and the prophets. But he said, from that moment on, the Holy Spirit Himself will be unlimited. He will be able to reach the hearts of all men and all women, all peoples, all tongues and classes, wherever you come from. And he began to say it this way, and here's where our teaching starts. The minute the Holy Spirit will come upon you, things will begin to change. Now, I know as a true diehard Pentecostal, we, we say then you begin to speak in tongues. Let me tell you, speaking in tongues is not the beginning and the end of it all. If that's all it was, then it was, there's not much sense in having it. It's not about speaking in tongues. He said when the Holy Spirit would come, the sign that the Holy Spirit has overwhelmed you is that you will speak in tongues. But he said that's not at all. He said when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, things will begin to change in your life. Mr. Success, that's his call of Mr. Success, will come on the inside of you and he will teach you how to be successful in every aspect and every uh, facet of your life. The first thing he would begin to change, he needs to change in you and requires you to change is this is called the area of speech. A few weeks ago, I dealt with this in a somewhat complex way and brought a, a, a different teaching on it. But he said that they would begin to prophesy. Now, when you want to know what prophesy is, it's not just to get up and say, thus saith the Lord. The, in 1 Corinthians 14, it qualifies what he actually meant by they will begin to prophesy. The word prophesy means to begin to speak forth comfort. It means to speak forth uh, encouragement, uh, uh, inspiration, exhortation, or edification to build, it, to build people up. And he says whenever the Spirit of God would come upon people, they then would begin to speak different. Their whole speech and their language would begin to change. They'll begin to talk comforting words to people. Look at somebody say, ach there. 
The, their words won't be bitter and won't be for, criticized. And no, the words that would come forth from a Holy Ghost born again person would be words that would be bringing comfort to so many people. They'd be bringing exhortation and they would bring an edification or instruction how to come to the next level. They would no longer be speaking death filled words. When you listen to the way people talk, they talk death filled words. He said when the Holy Ghost will come, he wants to teach you how your speech center, center can change, how you can to prophesy over your own life, how you begin when your words will have power and, and dynamic and effect on the lives of so many people when you speak. He said the Holy Ghost will begin to teach you how to do that. There'd be no longer death-filled words would come forth from those people, no longer negative words of doom and gloom, no words of, of filled with doubt and filled with, with unbelief, but there would be words of prophesying, increasing, uplifting people, especially over even over their own lives. They would begin to speak life, speak life over people, speak life over themselves. Speak life over your problems. When you get financial difficulties, relationship problems, few, problems here about your future, he says those, those Holy Ghost ones, when the Spirit of God gets a hold of them, they'll begin to speak words of comfort, words of exhortation. They'll begin to speak words of faith. Most people don't. When they hit a crisis, they begin to condemn or look down or talk negative. We need to stop that. If we're going to become successful, if we're going to walk in a different level, we've got to learn how to talk right. We've got to learn how to allow the Holy Spirit to take our words and learn how to prophesy over the problems of our life. He said that young men would see visions. We would need to learn how to speak what God says. Find out what God says about a subject and then you say the same thing. He said not only would they begin to speak, but they begin to see. Young men would see vision, old men would see dreams. Let me tell you something, that's your seeing factor. He says you begin to see things different. It's not that a, th a tree will not become a tree, but it means when you look at something, you'll see it as God sees it. You'll begin to see the thing the way God sees a thing. When you look at a thing the way God looks at it, it changes the whole perspective. You don't, you don't fear anymore. When you see it like God sees it, when you know what God has said about a certain circumstances and you're saying what he's saying and you're seeing it like he's saying it, let me tell you something, the way you see things will totally change dramatically. The fear will leave almost in an instant and it, allowed, it gives the Holy Spirit faith to work on. When you see it the way God sees it, and you say it the way God says it, let me tell you, it increases your faith, and now the Holy Spirit has something to move on. Up until that, as long as you're talking doubt, fear, as long as you're talking unbelief, the Spirit of God cannot move. You have tied His hands. He can't move. He's got nothing to move on. Your wishful thinking doesn't trigger it. It's when you begin to say what God says and see it like God sees it. Let me tell you something. Then you will begin to get results. Quick, fast results. It's more than speaking in tongues. I'm a tongue talker. From the day I got filled with the Holy Ghost, I haven't stopped talking in tongues. So I'm not shooting that down. I'm just saying there's more to it than that. I'd say when you let the Holy Spirit get a hold of your words and hold of your tongue, and you learn how to say what He says, you learn how to see what God wants you to say. When you're, what are you saying about your problems? You, what are you saying? Is this it all over? Ah, oh, no help for us. I don't know if this is the doctors can't see it. What are you saying? Because what you're saying is determining the outcome. Your words have power. What are you saying? Are you saying this is the end? Are you seeing this is, this, is going to be the, this is the way it's going to be for the next 10 years? What are you seeing? Because let me tell you, as long as you're seeing that, you're going nowhere. All you're doing is prophesying. All you're doing is holding the door open for the enemy to keep you there. If you want to change, if you want success, you have got to learn how to change the way you see and change what you say. The change what you say is the easier than, than the both. He said, you dream, dream the dreams of God. The old man will dream dreams. It doesn't mean that they'll get old so they get tired quicker and they fall asleep on Sunday while you're preaching. No, 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 they'll have deep desires on the inside of them. A dream becomes a desire. It comes there, the more you talk about something, it gets down on the inside of you and it becomes a desire. If you want them desires to be created, start and get a hold of the Scriptures of God. Find out what God says about you prospering, about you being in health. And keep saying that and keep looking at it and saying, that's for me, that's what God wants. You've got to keep saying it. 
And as long as you're hearing yourself saying, we're getting better, something's going to happen, we are going on holidays this year, we will get in you. As long as you can hear yourself talking that way, your faith begins to increase. Find out what God said, and you begin to say the same thing because faith comes by hearing and comes by hearing the word. I need to tell you that God has a tremendous future for you. His future for you is probably not what you're seeing right now. He has some fantastic things ahead for you. And the Bible tells us in Proverbs 18 and 21, it says that death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. In other words, what you're saying is what you're about to get. So immediately we've got to, we've got to change what we're saying. I've got to change what I say about me. I have to change what I say about my marriage. I have to change what I say about my job. I have to change what I say about the minister. I need to project some good things in my life. I need to sit down and look about my next year, the next month, to tell about June and July. I need to look at them and begin to prophesy and begin to speak, hey, we're going to do this this year. It's going to be our best year. It's going to be a good year. We need to start and say some things, some things because the Bible says that, that the power, there's power in the tongue. And your words that are released are creating doors, opening doors for you, creating, creating things, are drawing things to you that you need. Your words are containers. Every word that you spoke is a container. It carries one of two things. It either carries life or it carries death. The Bible says in another, another book in the Old Testament that says those words never come back void. They'll always accomplish what they're sent to do. So if you're speaking death-filled words over yourself, and the Bible says they will accomplish that. But if you're going to spell health, speak health-filled, well, health-filled words and dynamic words, that also will create, you can create your future. You can decide. You can, you, can, you can have this. You can begin to speak this out over your life and begin to determine a new day and a new life. If you allow the Holy Spirit of God to reconstruct the way you speak, if you can allow the Holy Spirit to do that, you'll begin to speak words of life. Let me tell you a passage of Scripture, very well known, Mark eleven twenty three. 23, it says, Jesus said in the authorized version, it says, Verily I say unto you, it simply means this is a truth. This is a dynamic truth. That whosoever, whosoever, this is you he's talking tonight, that whosoever shall say, everybody shout say. Now not think. Not think, but say. It literally has to come out of your mouth. As long as you're thinking, I'm going to get better. As long as you're thinking that, nothing's going to happen. That doesn't trigger it. As long as it's a thought, it's not going anywhere. It has to literally come out of your mouth. You must hear it. If you can speak at all. Now, if you've got something wrong with your voice, but that's a different all ball game altogether. We'll have to give you a different scripture. But as long as you can talk, the Bible says you, what you're saying is about to make a difference. Whatsoever you say. Now, not thinking over, but whatsoever you speak uh, uh, to that mountain. What, what are you saying about the mountain in your life? What are you saying about the troubles, the adverse, the stuff that's here? What are you saying? What are you telling it? Because he says what's coming out of your mouth is either allowing that to happen, or else it's reconstructing. It's drilling a hole through the mountain. It's, it's going to move that mountain. I'm telling you, something's going to happen, and that will go as long as the Holy Ghost has something to work on. And he says, Whatsoever you say unto this mountain, if you say, Be thou removed and cast into the sea, and listen to this, and shall not doubt in your heart, now, this is a whole, it's really a, a, a three-way thing, and next week we're going to uh, get into a, a different area called your imagination, where it, says, where it says that you shall not doubt in your heart. In your heart is where the canvas is that the Holy Spirit draws the picture on. The enemy also has access to that, and so he wants to paint a picture of you losing, going bankrupt, being left on the shelf, having nothing. And we usually give the enemy access quicker to the canvas. So we say, oh, I don't know about all that now. I'm not sure. I'm not sure we're going to, I don't know where we're going to come up. I don't know how. And on and on, all you're doing is giving the paintbrush to the enemy and say, paint me a picture. Oh, he'll paint one of doom and gloom and you dying young. He'll paint one of your hair falling out. He'll paint one of your granny who died when she was 53 and then paint another 53 up beside it and say, ha, 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 that's you. Are you going to listen to this stuff? You know what you need to do? Take the whole, the blood of Jesus and erase it. 
and say, "Uh uh-uh, that's not for me. And give the Holy Ghost the pen and say, tell me, what do you see me? And find out what God has already said that you can have. And put it down and see a picture. Literally see yourself doing it. See yourself having it. See yourself driving it. See yourself being there. You got to see it in your heart. We'll deal with that next week. But if you do not doubt in your heart, you got the right picture in your heart, but you'll believe that those things which you have just said shall come to pass. You know what he said? You shall have whatsoever you've just said. Therefore I say unto you, this is where he pulls it together, therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire, the desire is the vision, it's the picture that the Holy Spirit has now planted on the inside of you. You get that picture by studying the Word of God, reading the Word of God, and when you see Jesus healing, you say, wow, that's me in there, I'm getting healed in there. Or whatever you see him prospering or whatever, that's, allow the Holy Spirit to paint the pictures. I've told you before, you've got to learn how to get alone with the Spirit of God and say, talk to me, teach me. He'll give you, we call daydreams sometimes. He gives you vision, he gives you ideas, and suddenly you can see yourself going there. Suddenly there's, and, 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 and it's because it doesn't happen in 10 days, you think, oh, I'd really love to do that. Have you ever said it? I, oh, man, I, I could, I, man, I, I'd, I'd love to do it. And that doesn't go away. It becomes a desire. It comes a desire. You've, allowed, you've painted, you've got this f- formation by the Holy Ghost inside of you prospering, of you going somewhere, of you becoming an evangelist, of you getting an opportunity to sing or whatever. This is not, and the more it goes on, it becomes a desire. He says, whatsoever you desire, make sure it comes from the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost puts a desire on the inside to be, to have, to go, to do, Get a hold of that desire. And then, when you pray, believe that you receive it. In other words, see it in your heart. See that you've already got it. Just just imagine. Run with your imagination that it's already yours, that you're already sitting into whoever. You know what the Bible says? If you do that, you shall have it. Our problem happens to be this. Our praying and our saying are contrary to each other. Because we pray. And then the next words, we say something different to what we have just prayed. And all you're doing is cutting it out. You just, you're just canceling it right, left, and center. And you always remember, you always get what you say. But our praying, our praying has to be like us. It has to be linked with what we're seeing. What do you see? What are you seeing? If you're not seeing anything, then read the word until you do see something. And, and let the Holy Ghost pale on your imagination. What do you see yourself doing? What do you see yourself having? Do you see yourself sick all the time or do you see yourself well? You've got to begin to see. And what you see in here, uh, formed and formulated by the Holy Spirit, and you begin to say that, it becomes your prayer life. And you begin to pray that, things begin to happen. The Bible says if two agree. Let me tell you something, you need to be on unity and agreement on the inside. What you're saying needs to be lined up with what you're seeing. Have you got, I'm not, I'm not talking over your head this morning, sure I'm not. You've got to be able to see it on the inside. You're seeing what you see, and what you're saying has got to line up. And if you can get what you see and what you're saying lined up and don't alter from it, it'll surely come to pass. The problem is we're saying one thing and we're, we're doing something else and as soon as we get out of our prayer meeting or out of the prayer room, we're saying something totally contrary. That's because we've never seen it in here. The reason we contradict our prayers, we say, oh, Jesus, heal Tommy. And then we get outside and on the phone, no, Tom, Tommy's not going to make it. Tommy's not going to make it. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? All right, now, we're, 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 nobody's guilty in here. Look at somebody say, not guilty. <clears throat> we're not guilty because we don't know. But I'm trying to, I'm trying to like to see the reason you, the reason you, you pray, oh, Jesus, I really feel it now. Tommy. It's being healed. And then you get out and you're talking, sister. Did you hear about Tommy? Tommy's about, he's about three days left to live. Now we, it's not lining up. You know why? Because you haven't seen on the inside. You didn't sit long enough to see Tommy getting healed on the inside of you. Because if you really believed, seen it, understood it, and you saw it in the Holy Ghost on the inside, don't matter what anybody else says, you said, I know that, but here's what I'm praying, because I saw Tommy getting healed. Are you with me now? So you gotta get your you gotta get your seeing lined up with what you're saying. And if you'll ever get the two lined up, I tell you, success becomes a part of your being right there in time. So this is why you need to find a Holy Ghost church. 
because then the people there will be speaking positive. They'll be talking God's will and God's destiny over your life. See, John 10 and 10 says, the thief, that is the dirty devil, he comes to kill and steal and destroy, but it, Jesus said, I've come, and, and this, is, this is Jesus, this is our Savior, this is my, here's what he said. He said, that's the, the devil down there. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But he said, I want to tell you what I want to do. He said, I am come that you might have life. Now, it's a, it's a pity he hadn't put a full stop in there because he said, I could believe for that. But he didn't. He says, I want you to have this more abundant, more abundantly. He said, I'm, I want you to have an access of living. I want you to live at the high end. I want you to be in the fast lane. I want you to be more, do more than anybody could ever imagine. This is what he said. Jesus says, I've come that you could have abundant life. You know, most people I know don't have that, don't even think that way, so they don't talk that way. So they never experience it. But what if you were to take that for one month and examine that scripture and every day get up and say, this is for me. Jesus said, I can have it in more abundance. I got life right now, but I tell you, something good's going to happen to me. Something phenomenal is about to break loose in my life. Something's about to explode on the inside of me. If you woke up every morning thinking that way, I'm telling you, someone, you'd begin to see things better than what you're doing. Before you know it, you begin to talk that way and your prayer life would begin to change and you would begin to see a different way altogether. The Holy Spirit came to change those two areas in particular. One is the way you speak and the other is the way you see. You have to link the two. The two has to come together. If he can, if he can get you to see things right and talk things right, man, he can change your world in a second. Third John 1 verse 1 and chapter 2. 3 John 1 verse 2 says, Beloved, he's talking to believers now. He says, I wish above, this is top of my list, I wish above all things that you may prosper. Prosper. Look at somebody say, I can't believe he said that. This is the Bible. I'm reading this from the Bible. All right, this is, this is not the newspaper. This is the Bible. He says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper. So you need to get an image on the inside of you of being in a better place than you are right now. No matter where you are, you can be in a better place. Uh, well, well, you say, I'm, or, I'm comfortable now. Well, let me check on your giving because the more you have, the more you can give. Uh, you understand this? The more people you can help. So why not go to them? Why not get the best? I need to help everybody all around the place. He said, believe it. Listen, three things here. He said, I want you to be and I want you to prosper. This is why nobody needs to remain where they are. See that this is God. He wants me to prosper. So begin to tell yourself that. Begin to see yourself prosper. And then listen, be in health. Be in health. He said, I want you to be in health. He's not talking about being healed all the time. He's talking about here it is. I want you to walk in a level of health. I want you to walk that way. He, sometimes you just need healed to keep you up in that line. But he said, I want you walking up there. I want you to be in health. This is it God's will? He said, I want you to prosper. I want you to be in health. And he says, but here's the clause. Even as your soul prospers, you've got to begin to see yourself prospering, and you've got to begin to see yourself well. Are you with me? And if you can really see yourself not having to reach for the medicine, if you can begin to see yourself coming out of that chair, if you can begin to see yourself not having to inject yourself, if you can begin to see it, it becomes a desire, and the next thing and then it becomes your prayer life, and you begin to prophesy that over your life. Bible says that now the Holy Spirit is something to work on. Things begin to happen to you. As long as you're talking negative, as long as you're talking against it, as long as you're agreeing with everything, nothing's going to change. That's why nothing has changed for you for the last 40 years. Nothing's moved. Well, I read and study. I know you read and study, but I'm telling you now how to put the reading and study together, put it together. You've got to, first of all, see, allow the Holy Spirit to blast a picture on the inside of you of you normality resuming of you breathing normal again, of you getting out of this hospital, of you, be, you've got to see it, not the doctors. I tell you, when the doctor comes and tells me I'm well, then we believe we're well, even if we die the next day. We believe a doctor. Why don't you believe Dr. Jesus and begin to see yourself getting back to that health? See yourself first on the inside. I'm telling you, when you see that, 
you can begin to speak that and it becomes your prayer world and suddenly the Holy Spirit has something to move upon and that's when you see signs, wonders and miracles because now you've lined up with the Holy Spirit and he has something, something really good to do for you. Actually, the Bible says in 1 Peter 2, 24, who self, talking about the Lord Jesus, who, uh, who has uh, own self, he bore our sins on, the, uh, on his, his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins would live under righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Were is past. It means we already are. So we're not the sick looking to be well. We are, the, we are the healed. And there's an invasion coming against us. The enemy has come against us. And as long as you can see sickness as an enemy, you'll come against it. You'll prophesy. You will be able to see yourself being well then. You'll learn how to see yourself. The ministry of the prophet, the ministry of the prophet, it's very simple, is to help you see what God's seeing. Because you don't normally see what God said. You, do, you just see the obstacle. You see we're not going to get any better. You see this marriage is over. You see this is worse. But when you see it like God sees it, it's entirely different. And that's all you need, one glimpse. One glimpse from the way God sees it, it changes everything. The ministry of the prophet is to let, The ministry of the prophet, if they're talking doom and gloom and, and, and telling you're going to die in a week, let me tell you, it's not right. Don't listen to it. Don't receive it. Walk away. Now, don't be nasty. Shake hands and say, God bless you, and go on about your business. Because the ministry of the prophet is to let you see how God sees a thing. And when you glimpse at how God sees you being well, being whole, it builds a picture. The prophetic words builds a picture in here. And when you see it in here, you can begin to say it. It becomes your prayer life. And now, all of a sudden, things are beginning to happen to you. You've got to read the Word of God. You've got to read it and read it and read it and read it. From the day I got born again, I read it. I devoured it. I looked into it. I studied it. I, at the beginning, I didn't read Leviticus and all the books because I didn't know what they actually meant. But I read the bits I could, like Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John. And, and I read the book of Acts. I read the books I could understand till it became a part of me. I read the Gospels. I read Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John. And I saw Jesus in those pages. I would read from 8 a.m. in the morning to 2 a.m. in the middle of the night. And, and, and this went on for weeks and months. This was going on. I was studying, reading it. And every time I'd get in there, I'd have breakfast with Laura. And then I'd go, and, and, and she'd say, what are you doing? And I said, I said, I'm going to Jerusalem today. Jesus is holding another crusade. And I've I got to go there. I'd run upstairs, get the Bible open, and watch him studying. I'd watch him in the crusades and going across the boat to the, 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 the people that was demon-possessed. I, I could see him in my imagination. I, the, the words of the Bible was beginning to come into my imagination. I I can see Jesus healing the sick. I can see him feeding the 5,000. I can see him doing it. And one day in the midst of that, he was walking into Jericho. There was a blind man there. And all of a sudden, my imagination clicked over into a vision. And I can see, I can see a beggar by the side of the road. And it's like Jesus, I was like, like Jesus was walking along with his disciples and I was walking with them in my imagination. Vision or imagination, but pretty close. But I was walking along with them. I can see him. And he went to reach down to touch the this beggar. I can see it. I can smell the dust. I can hear the crowd behind me. And, and, and as it's like going down, Jesus was reaching down to touch the blind man. He suddenly stopped and he looked up. He looked up and this is what he said to me. He said, you have a choice. You have a choice. For the rest of your life, you can be the beggar on the side of the road that's always got your hand up and saying, help me, help me. Or you can be the one like me who will stand up and reach down and say, let me help you up. And he said no more but looked at me. I said, I want to do what you're doing. <laughs> and my ministry at that point changed. It changed because of an imagination in here. I could see myself helping people reaching down. That's all Law and I has done for the whole 40-odd years of ministry, as all we have ever done was step down and reach out and hand to help somebody up to another level. All the thing I teach is to help people up to another level. I can't ask you to go where I've not been. So I tell you what I know. And it's always to help people up. And Laura reaches down her pretty little hand to help you up in health and healing. You've got to see it in here. What are you seeing? What do you see about you? What are you seeing about life? I used to do this until it became real on the inside of me. Visions and dreams. Imaginations 
We'll deal with it next week. But the imaginations of the heart is where God imprints his, his promises on the inside of you. And his promises becomes your desires and his visions and his dreams for you. Do you kind of, what, do you, what do you envision? What do, what do you see? What do you deep, deep down in? What do you see for your children? What do, you, what do you see for them? No matter how old they are, what do you see for them? What are you seeing for your health? For your wealth, what are you seeing about your five years down the road? What are you seeing for you about your children? You've got to see yourself coming through this. Not stuck, not getting worse. You've got to see yourself breaking out of this. You've literally got to see it in here, so much so that it becomes variable out there and say, I'm getting out of here. And something's going to happen. There's going to be new medication or something's going to break loose. But I'm changing my world, changing my world and changing ways. And this is how the Holy Spirit does it. They don't teach you this everywhere, so I thought I'd teach it to you to help you climb out of where you are to where God needs you to be. Poverty. Poverty. It's a spirit. It rules nations. Whole nations drop into third world societies because of a spirit of poverty. Nobody's ever come against it, so they just play along with it, etc. But poverty can become a mindset. It's where the enemy operates. And, and, and that is passed down through the generations. Well, my dad never had anything, and my granda never had anything, so I suppose I'll never have anything either. And it's passed down the generation. Poverty is passed down the generations by words that somebody spoke over to you. It's not worth while you doing that here. Granda never had anything. You'd probably never have anything. Like we're just living in a wee townhouse here, so we'll never be anybody. And all we've ever done is passed on our poverty down to another generation because nobody ever told them you don't have to live this way anymore. When the Holy Spirit comes, he'll give you a new picture. He'll give you a picture of you climbing out of that hole. He'll give you a new picture of you breathing life again, of love. Love's going to live here again. You'll, you'll have a, a picture of, of you being touched by the power of God and doing something phenomenal and fantastic. You've got to see yourself according to the Scriptures. You're more than a conqueror. More than, a conqueror is a person who went over, overcame them the first time. You, you, won the, the, you won the battle against all odds. You, you conquered. You won it. More than a conqueror means you went back in twice and did the same thing all over again. You're more than a conqueror. Absolutely. You can conquer this relationship. You can conquer it. You can conquer that habit. You can conquer that health. You can conquer that financial reversal. You can conquer that business. You can conquer that ministry. You can rise to the top if you learn how to walk with the Holy Spirit. Let Him see yourself doing. You say, Joe, do you never have problems? Of course he got problems. You can't be alive on the face of planet Earth and not have a problem. In fact, the higher up you go <coughs> in the kingdom of God, the bigger devils you're fighting. And that's right, every now and then one will step into the ring with you and takes the breath from you. And you say, whoa, whoa, where did that thing come from? And for a minute or two, you're almost sitting on the floor, but you're 30 seconds later, you're back up again and saying, okay, well, I beat that in the last time. I can beat this one too. There's something on the inside of you. The dreamer on the inside of you comes alive. You're either seeing yourself defeated and broke and gone, and then you start talking that, or else you'll see yourself rising up and taking the moment and grasping this and breaking through. You need to break through. You say, well, there's nobody else that's ever broke through. But you can break through. You can break through. And the only way you've got to break through, you've got to see it first on the inside. See yourself coming out of that. See yourself never again having to go through that. See it on the inside and begin to say it. All of a sudden it becomes a deep desire to have that. And when you get that desire and begin to see it and begin to pray it, it shall come to pass. Of course we have problems. There's giants out there. There's hurdles. And many a time when you look at the hurdle or look at the giant, you're stopped dead on your tracks. You've got to learn to look beyond that. Look beyond that. And, and let the Holy, talk to the Holy Spirit. He'll paint a picture of you overcoming, coming through it. Come. You don't have to know how. I don't know how he does what he does. I don't know how you're going to get out of the problem. I don't know how he's going to fix it. I'm not God. I don't know how he fixes it. But he says, here's what you do, Joe. He says, you see yourself coming through this. And leave the fixing up to me. Look at somebody say, leave the fixing up to God. He may never tell you how he's going to do it. 
But suddenly the phone call comes, or suddenly they change the law somewhere, or suddenly you go somewhere and there's a check comes through the door from somebody you don't even know in your life before. Let me tell you, God has a million ways to do it. He just needs somebody lined up that he can do it with them. If you're not lined up, he'll not do it. It's simple as easy. So you've got to begin to see yourself prospered. See yourself coming through this. See yourself living in a different lifestyle than you're doing right now. See yourself. And begin to get, becomes a desire. And then begin to speak those things as prayers, prophesying over yourself. And then, I see as long as you look at that problem, and that's where people stuck. They look at the problem day and night. It's all they talk about, all they talk about, all they talk about. The problem, the problem, the problem. You know all you're doing? Creating fear on the inside of you. The more you talk about that, the more you talk about that is painting now. You have given it the paint. Right? Say, go ahead and paint. And it's painting an image on the inside of you, never getting better, only getting worse. Coming to, and then you'll paint your wee bit saying this, well, I, I think somehow the Lord come back and fall on me. That's all you're doing is painting a picture. And now the Holy Spirit is nothing. He has no way of moving because you've given nothing to him to move on. The enemy now has something to move and he'll create it for you. Change the picture. See God doing something. We don't know how he does it, so don't tell him. Well, if you'd just talk to my granny and she could do this and talk to my Uncle Tommy, this would work. Don't tell God his business. Just say, here's what it is. We're coming through. Look at somebody say, I'm coming through this. And let God get you through it. But just trust, just seeing it in here and speaking it out here keeps you going until God gets to where you need to be. His promises, allow his promises to paint a picture of you winning on the inside. Did you get that? There's three things, and then we're closing. There's three things that, uh, that a vision, that vision, this getting it on the inside does for you. It gets rid of the chaos on the inside of you. It'll, it'll, it'll take away the fear from the inside of you. When the fear comes, I remember when Brenda uh, uh, got that cancer and they, they told her she'd only several months left to live. I remember her telling me the worst thing is not the cancer, it's the fear because it doesn't leave you day or night. And I remember then at that point thinking, I know how to beat this. If you can beat the fear, you can beat the cancer. And let me tell you, she said, the hardest battle was beating the fear. She says, during the day I learned how to come in with the fear, fear you're going to die, fear you're not going to be there for another Christmas, the fear. She says it would grip you like this. She says, oh no, you, you, you knew it was a spirit was taunting you. So immediately you had to counteract that. Immediately say, no, that's not the way it is. God is alive in me. This is the day the Lord is made and I'll celebrate it. I can see myself living for three more Christmases. I can see, you got to fight it, fight it. She said, when the enemy couldn't get you during the day, he would get you at night. He had to have nightmares. He would taunt you in the nightmares. He says, hey, even, in my, even in my dreams, I was fighting them in my dreams. You got to fight the fear. How to fight the fear is get a different picture in here. Let the Holy Spirit paint a picture of you prosper. If you've got a vision, a picture on the inside, and we're going to deal with more next week. If you've got a picture in here, let me tell you, the confusion will go, the disarray will go, and it doesn't matter what's happening out there, you now have a direction to go in. If you're going to be, it puts boundaries in your life. If a man's going to climb Mount Everest, if he's going to climb Sleeve Donard, he can go and have a, a, an Ulster fry and then go out and climb that mountain on a full valley. But if you're going to climb Everest for two years before it, you'll go into training. If you tell you, the vision you have in here will put disciplines in your life because you'll start making preparation for when this thing comes to pass. Here's where we're going. Here's how we're going to do it. And you'll start, it'll put new boundaries on the inside of you. It'll give you purpose. It gives you something to get out of bed for. It gives you something when you go at night, you get to the end of bed and say, wow, I'm one day closer to what God has promised me. It gives you something to get in the inside. It gives you this direction in life. So no matter what happens, you know something good is going to happen. Look at somebody say, something good is going to happen to me. We're closing. When God told Moses to go get them 12 of your best guys and send them into the promised land, the promised land was no distance away. The promised land's only across that mountain range. On the other side of it, that's where the promised land is. He says, why don't you send 12 spies in there? And he said, it's a, God told them what it was like. It's a land, the description was a land full of, flown with milk and with honey. And he told them it was going to be an ab a land of abundance, a land of great stuff. And he said, send your 12 spies in to confirm what I've just said. And, and so he sent the 12 spies in. Let me tell you something. Ten of them came back and said, well, we did see that, but... 
There's giants out. We go there, we're dead, we're dead, we're dead. There's only two of them came back and was saying what God was saying. And God couldn't, God stopped the whole show, wouldn't let them go in there. The funny thing about it is, a generation later, they did go in and they did conquer it. The same giants were there and the same walls was there. There was nothing different. The, the, the geography, the situation hadn't changed. What did change was the mindset of the people. The first bunch couldn't do it because they couldn't, they wouldn't say what God was saying and they didn't see what God was saying. The second generation, they could see themselves doing it and they begin to talk about what we're going to do when we get there. And let me tell you, they took it. I can tell you now with clarity and with confidence, your world can change. I don't care who's told you it can't. You can succeed. You can come up to another level without a shadow of doubt. You do not have to remain where you are. There's just two simple principles you need this day, and the Holy Spirit came to help you. You've got to learn how to sit in His presence until you see what He sees. And then begin to say what He says over your life, and it causes the Holy, gives the Holy Spirit something to work on. So don't run around and say, you know, it's something with a habit when Laura and I was learning this, we would listen to what each other said and, and I would turn around and say, hey, don't be saying that now, don't be saying that. And, and the only, I don't want to get you mad because she would turn around and say, oh, oh, you shouldn't say that now, you shouldn't, you get what you, you know, you, you get what you say, you get what you say. We know that, but we slip up every now and then. Look at somebody say, slipsies. <laughs> so so we're, not, we're not here to criticize and here to correct. No, you have got to get this yourself. You've got to have a revelation. You've got to understand this. Once you understand this yourself, you will not care what anybody else says. You know you're headed. You know you're right on. I would tell you something. This, this will, if within three to six months, you will begin to see dramatic changes in your life that you never thought possible. Dramatic changes just beginning to correct what you're saying. The best one is to see yourself in here. Allow the Holy Spirit to paint those pictures and then say what he's saying. And watch, do you see how far you go, how fast you go? Do exactly what he says. The Holy Spirit loves and longs to work with people. He doesn't want you to be where you are. He's got different ways to do it. Now again, you can't tell him how to do it, and I don't know how he does it. I just know he wants to. And all we've got to do is agree with that and leave the rest up to him and he will do it. Every time you got a prophecy, every time somebody prophesied over you, it was very simple. It was God painting a picture on the inside of the canvas of your heart. That's all it was. God painted a picture of the inside of you, of you prospering, of you having something, going somewhere, and doing something. It probably didn't come to pass straight away, but the more you thought about it, it became a desire. Yes, I want that. I gotta have this. I got the pictures in, the desires come. Now that's what you begin to pray and begin to prophesy, and suddenly it begins to come to pass. It took me years to find this stuff out. But Laura and I has got doors open to us that you wouldn't have thought possible. Things has happened, and it became because it started off in here. Put your hand over your heart right now. Holy Spirit of God. Start something in here. Start something in here. <coughs> we weren't born to live less than we are right now. There'll be no bankruptcy. There'll be no doing without. There'll be no decrease. The enemy would like to paint that picture because of the society and the times we're living in. would like to paint a picture of bankruptcy, people laughing at us, being made a fool of. The enemy would like to paint a picture of you having to crawl on your hands and knees and crawl back to the car park because there's no hospital bed for you. The enemy would like to paint a picture of you never getting better. And the final picture, he likes to show you a picture of you're standing watching a hearse going by and you're inside the coffin. He wants to paint a picture of doom and gloom. Do not accept it. Spirit of the living God, you're the one that's got the dynamics Life. You got real life. You got joy unspeakable. You got finances out there that we know nothing about with our name on it. 
You got careers, you got ministry, you got open doors, you got things that's, that's going to happen, has to happen. You got things you want set in place. Because I know when you want to do something big and historic, you get a hold of a man or woman and you put a vision inside their heart and then things start to come to pass. These people are a visionary people. They can see themselves doing certain things. I want to ask you this morning, Holy Spirit, take us to our level. For some, let them see themselves coming out of this, this, uh, this health issue. There has to be a way. Medical science may not have a, a, a remedy at the minute, but there has to be another remedy, a Holy Ghost remedy, that you can move, Holy Spirit. We give you permission to move on our nerve systems, on our heart and our mind and our, and our, and our thoughts, and the eye socket and our blood pressure and our stomach and, and the bowels and the liver. Wherever, we, we're going to believe right now in Jesus' name for health being restored in this building right now, this day. We begin to see a picture of the healing hand of the Lord Jesus reaching down and touching us and something being released on the inside of us. We're going to believe right now there's a key being passed to us that will bring success, the key that will bring finances, a key, a key that will open a door, that, um, a key that will close a door that we do not need open, but another key that will open a door that we can have where there'll be all the provisions that we ever need. They're going to believe this night in Jesus' name. We believe right now in the name of the Lord Jesus that some things that has never been settled will be settled. We don't know how it'll ever get settled, but you do. And so we are going to believe right now as we, as we begin to say it's coming our way, we're going to believe even for our families, the rise and fights and, the, and all the stuff that goes on in families, we're going to believe that will cease and the good hand of God will come. We're going to see, see our families working together. We'll see, we'll see businesses opening. We'll see our children getting the best jobs. We're going to see our grandchildren prospering and, and driving cars and, and doing well in their education, doing well in school. We're believing because we're seeing things. We're seeing health being restored right now in the body of Christ in Jesus' name. I know you're going to do something phenomenal on this island, but somebody's got to see it first. Somebody's got to say it. I pray if there's people in here who carry on a national dream that their dream will consume them. It'll be a deep, deep desire maybe for their nation or for their, for their county or for the region or for their village or for the town. Let, the, let that, that vision now begin to consume them. There's those that dream of having finances and we're going to believe that those people will dream the dreams of being able to help an orphanage or help a hospital or, or help a missionary. Going to believe that Father they'll see like money falling out of the sky and then blowing on it and it'll blow to another nation or another country just to help somebody somewhere. And her dreams go wild. And then when it all settles, let's have that one paint a picture on the inside. We look at the seats beside us and we're going to have a vision and a picture of our whole family sitting in those seats. If you've got a big family like mine, we'll believe we'll take two rows to do it, but that's okay. And we get just for a just let us glimpse this morning and see see those loved ones sitting on the seat beside us. That this church won't be big enough to hold it all, not even in two services. And to believe right now in Jesus' name that these people come alive with vision and with dreams, and their prayer life will change, and what to see will change dramatically in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand to your feet for thirty seconds, please. We're almost finished. Just stand to your feet. And one day the, in the book of Genesis, it said that God spoke to the man of God, the servant of God, and he says, stand where you are. And he says, take a look to the north and the south and the east and the west. And he says, as far as you can see, I'll give it to you. As far as you can see, I'll give it to you. How far can you see? How far can you, what can you see yourself doing? Going to Japan? What, how far can you see yourself? How far do you see yourself? Where do you see yourself driving? Where do, where, do you, where do you see yourself living? What's the hopes that's on the inside of you? What do you see? Because he says, as, he says, look this way, this way, this way. And as far as you can see, he said, I'll give it to you. And God's final words to the man, he says, begin to walk it through now and walk the length, length and breadth. But you and I can't walk the length and breadth, but you can in your imagination. Why don't you paint the picture? Don't ask your wife or your sister. You just paint your picture. Pull up a chair, get yourself a cup of coffee and sit there. Put some nice worship music on and paint a picture of you and Jesus walking and talking. 
Paint a picture of your family going to church. Paint, paint a picture. It'll be better than what you've normally been pictured. And out of that, the Holy Spirit will talk to you. And that's the thing he'll go for. That'll make your world come alive. You, you've got ministry inside you. Your ministry will never work until you see yourself doing it. And then you've got to learn how to say it. You've got to learn how to say, I have a healing ministry. You've got to learn how to say it. I am a prophet. You've got to learn how to say it. It doesn't work until you do. Your salvation, you've got to believe with your heart. But you're not even see of just by believing with your heart until you confess with your mouth. That takes two. You've got to believe it here, and you've got to say it out here. You need to learn how to say some stuff over your life. When you're driving down that road in your car, speak to your car. Say, you'll not break down on me. You'll be low maintenance. You're, the fuel will be big. Just talk. Just learn how to talk. Laura tells me sometimes I talk too much. Sometimes I get her to pray for me, and she's praying for me, and I'm talking at the same time. I understand, but I'm saying the right things. I'm saying the right things. So, so here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to start on this side. I want you to walk past me. I'm going to lay hands on you this morning, okay? I'm fired up, okay? I don't, I'm probably not even prophesying to you. I want to lay hands on you this morning because there's an impartation to allow the dreamer to come alive on the inside of you, okay? And, and, and we'll hold you up. You don't fall because we need you to move real quick because it's 25 to, it's 25 to, and I need coffee or something to, to sustain me. Okay? We're going to do this real quick, but there's an anointing. There's an anointing that causes the pictures to be painted so easy. Uh, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. When you do this as long as I do, if I get into any type of worship music where God's moving, I begin to see things that fast because I've trained, I've learned how to do it. But there's an anointing, there's a way to do it. So, so God will talk to you about, you, he'll never talk to you about what I'm doing, he'll talk to you about what you're doing. Now, if you don't want to come up the front, fine by me, that's okay, that's all right. I won't chase after you today. But in about 30 seconds, we're going to walk past here and we're going to do it. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, wherever you're listening from, you need to ask him into your life first. The enemy's been painting pictures because he's the Lord of your life right now. But if you ask Jesus Christ to forgive you of all your sins, come into your heart and be Lord of your life, he'll paint a new picture. The blood of Jesus will cleanse you. The blood of Jesus will save you. And you'll become a born again believer. Just text me or write to me or tell somebody. I just prayed that prayer in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.